what you give thanks for and how you give to honor God and bless your community. And so we do ask you to return your estimate of sharing cards. Uh, and in fact, we have promised that each week we'll help you see how many of our community have returned their estimate of sharing cards. We've been talking about how acorns are an image of planting seeds so that others can receive nourishment uh, and a safe place to grow. And so this many of our community have already returned those purple cards. The box is outside where you can mail it to the church drop off. But we really hope to see everyone's contribution. Um, we put in an even number for every card that is put in. So please join us as we give thanks to God um, and dream of how we will serve God in the year ahead. And so we gather for worship this night. I invite you to rise as you are able. Let's see, this is the second Saturday of the month, right? Yes. yes. Okay, wonderful. And so um, we are going to join in a song that at first I wasn't sure if we should sing tonight. It's called My Lord, What a Morning. Uh, but it is about um, the vision of God's kingdom coming. Regardless of the time of day, how bright, how beautiful that will be. And so we join in this hymn, and if you have a hymnal at home, it is number 438. My Lord, what a morning.
invitation to be seated. We are blessed by the reading of God's word. And uh, some days I'm just so thankful to hear it. 
And some days I think, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see how well that sermon is out. that 
gap between the way we live and the way that God desires us to live. Jesus makes us right with God, and he did that through his sacrifice. And this is grace, that there is nothing we did in order to earn that salvation, that forgiveness, but it's offered to us so that we might trust that God truly loves us. And God promises then to write the law on our hearts, not a brittle, stony law, but the law of love. Not one only unique to Christians, because that law is embedded in the Hebrew scriptures that we call the Old Testament. So when we love God, the law written on our hearts and made clear to us through the work of the Holy Spirit will help us to truly love God, to be grateful, and to love God in a new way so that we will live in a new way. Sinners that we are, and we are sinners, all of us, that frees us so that we don't have to be afraid of the law that would judge us. Rather, we live for God, and what we do reflects our living to honor God and to love all of God's beloved. And so this is the sacrifice that pastors make. We do as the priests of old, doing these exercises called sermons that help people, hopefully, help people see ways that we've separated ourselves from God. But more importantly, to see how Jesus stands in the gap that we have made, to see God's grace at work in God's free and generous and continuing acts of reconciliation, of reaching out and embracing us. So we pastors teach grace. We point to grace when we preach and when we preside at this table, at Jesus' table. And so we ourselves stand on grace and invite others to that same foundation. And further, pastors know as long as we remember it, we have to return to grace again and again. But we know that those who love God will want to see their lives move in a new way, to make real changes, small changes and big changes that will help us to love God more and to serve God more, to commit ourselves to all those who God loves in his creation full of God's children. And so hopefully our response, not only the pastor, but the congregation, is to seek God's will, to let God's will become our mission. And so this is our modern-day sacrifice, not a bull on the altar, because Jesus has atoned for us once and for all, so there is no longer need for animal sacrifices. But rather, our sacrifice is to proclaim the grace, what already is, and to pair that grace with mission, with what can be. And so this is part of the role of the pastor, and it's a role of our whole community together. But like with exercises, I can't sacrifice for you. I can't proclaim grace for you. I can't put your feet into mission for you. I can't change your heart or mind any more than my exercising can change your body. A sacrifice means that everyone who is involved is willing to let something go, and then to let something new take its place. So your sacrifice is to humbly welcome grace, what already is, and to undertake the mission of what can be. And for that, two things must happen. One, God, the Holy Spirit, must be present and moving. Is God present? Yes. So part one is already checked off, promised to us, and available this very night. And so, for us to humbly welcome grace and to undertake mission, we need a second thing. And that is that as a community, we need to do as the author of Hebrews states, to provoke one another to love 
and to good deeds. We need to witness to one another about God's grace and about our mission. So the collaborative faith journals are an example of that. The question tonight is what is the kindest thing anyone has ever said to you? That if you put that in that journal, someone else may find it and hear the inspiration that you share in that and hear that they can be part of that mission to share such kind, life-giving words with others. So we provoke one another in so many different ways in our community. We provoke one another outside of our comfort zone. Like exercising pushes our heart rate to a target zone. Or strength training provokes our muscles to engage with one another and build new tissue. So one of the ways that we are provoking one another at the season of the church year when we see the beautiful harvest images around us is to discuss uh, our stewardship. In the spring, we often talk about the actions we take, um, the time and talents we share. But in this season, when we imagine the year ahead, we are pressing for financial giving, especially in the form of those estimate of sharing cards. They are that lovely lavender color this year. Because no one else can give your estimate of sharing card for you. I could certainly share financially and that might cover what might be your part in our mission. But what each of us offers in that estimate of sharing card is a commitment to be present in this coming year, in this congregation, to, all, to honor God's grace that already is amongst us, and to help us dream together with what we can do when we put our resources together, how we can feed the world and provide a place that displays God's splendor as Isaiah speaks about the oaks of righteousness that grow from acorns like these and like our estimate of sharing cards. And so, exercise and sacrifice. Both of these things work best when you have partners. Isn't that one of the first things they tell you to do with exercise, is to have someone who will hold you accountable, who will be there when you fall. The two of you can encourage one another on the days when you say, it's, it's, it's foggy, I don't want to put my shoes on. They say, well, I'm going to meet you there, right? Exercise works best when we have partners and it's true for our sacrifice, whether financial giving or the sacrifice of being humble before God, letting go of our pride so that something else can come in. So exercise and sacrifice go best with partners because they're things that change what you do and increase also what you can do. And so grace, what already is, partners with mission, God's gift and God's call to each of us, to all of us. So may we provoke, lovingly provoke one another to love and good deeds, grateful for God's saving grace, and ready to share that grace with the world in need. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able as we join in our message song. Is built on a rock in the hymnal it's number six five two.
creator, you show us a path of life. Bless faithful people everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who have experienced harm in religious spaces. We name before you those times in our hearts, O oh Lord, when the church has not been a safe home for us, when we have felt excluded or not able to enter. Lord, cultivate healthy congregations. Help us to be a healthy expression that tells of your love, that enacts your reconciliation with the world. We give thanks to you for those who are celebrating their baptismal anniversaries this week, Lord. For Sophia Hankins and Kaylin Schwab, Massimo de Cristofero, Logan Barnes, Grace Heinold, and Brandon Payton, Lord, bless their proclamation and help them to, uh, to feel your love every day. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, our constant, you love our universe from beginning to end. As the seasons change, protect animals that migrate and hibernate. Bring them safely to a sheltered place and a more abundant season. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, our ruler, you write your law on human minds and hearts. Give wisdom to all elected officials and leaders to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people, Lord, and help them to hear all the perspectives that are offered so that your world will flourish. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for those affected by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, and wildfires, and the first responders who support them. In the short term, Lord, and in the long term, calm their fear, supply their need, be the solid ground beneath their feet, and help us as your church, Lord, to serve them both when disaster strikes and in the years following as they seek to rebuild. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreements, of differences, of questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in expressing their love of your Son, our Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those seeking healing and strength, O oh Lord. For our friend Neil, that his test results will come back clear. For Joe and Sandy, as Joe continues to recuperate and faces further surgery. For Linda Daly, Frank DeClerico, Joanne Gray, Madeline Lofagrin. For the Parish and the Schnauber families. O oh Lord, send your love and help us to be your hands and feet going to them and surrounding them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our beginning and our end, your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy, from famous saints to the people we have loved, especially those we name before you now. Assure us, O oh Lord, of your resurrection promise. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace. We invite you to share your financial offerings in the plate of the 
or myself. And as we invite you to share your financial gifts, we remind you that there are many ways you can give um, online as well as uh, through physical um, checks and offerings. And we also are grateful to those who are uh, helping us to fill our crates outside for the Christian Caring Center and Bridge of Peace. And so we join in our offering prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you. Name's my name. O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.